Good afternoon, and thank you for gathering as an SPPS community today, if you're able to join. I want to thank you for all of your care and concern for our students, for each other, and for our community. I can tell you as a leader, um, as a parent, I continue to learn and grow and lead during this unprecedented time in our lifetime. Friday, March 13th, and Saturday, March 14th, I spent the day on the phone with local leaders, state officials, and colleagues around the country. By then, a few states and districts had already made the decision to close their schools. We were all somewhat certain that Minnesota would also soon be in this conversation. Saturday evening, the 15th, superintendents were notified of an emergency phone call on Sunday, March 15th at 8 a.m. On this call, Governor Walls spoke and previewed his press conference that was scheduled in a couple of hours later at 10 a.m. on that Sunday the 15th. I apologize, I used 15th for that Saturday, Sunday the 15th. Uh, they're all blending in together here. During the press conference at 10 o'clock on the 15th, Executive Order 2002 was announced. The three areas most directly impacting SPPS are the closing of schools from March 18th until March 27th to create a distance learning plan, to provide childcare for Minnesota's essential employees and to provide our students meals. I cannot say enough about how all of you have embraced this news. Planning a learning and support that is meaningful and relevant in our distance learning plan, providing childcare for families who need it most for their own service to continue. Thank you, especially to our EAs and TAs, our community education staff, Discovery Club, uh, you have been amazing. And also thank you to our nutrition services team for taking your operations into an expanded mobile production and distribution model. I don't think anyone can imagine the difference in serving meals in a school cafeteria versus for an entire community where things are packaged individually, they're placed into boxes that can last several days, uh, they're dis distributed, and I just can't say enough about how much I appreciate your flexibility and your innovation uh, to make this happen. Our team of leaders and staff who have shaped the framework for what a distance learning plan is for St. Paul Public Schools. And in its first creation of its kind, I ask that all of us to be partners in this work. Uh, today I've been on several calls where many of the questions that you might have, I want you to know I have them too. Um, I can tell you that after every call, uh, gaining clarity and perspectives that I don't have, um, I gain a sense for what the direction could mean for us. I can also tell you one of the challenges in this time is that it appears as news that I'm receiving, like you, sometimes is five minutes, uh, lasts only five minutes before it's already old and new information comes our way. And I think that is both uh, an excitement for uh, where we are right now in terms of what distance learning could mean, but it's also a great challenge. Our communication is going to be critical. Our St. Paul Public Schools distance, le distance learning team also plans uh, to support, need support from IT. And I thank the entire, entire department for your rapid deployment of support. Our transportation department has coordinated thousands of route runs to deliver food this week, along with some of our EAs who coordinated home delivery of iPads. And I'm happy to announce that right now, 99.3% of students now have iPads in their hands. And, we'll, and we will continue until all students have them and are able to connect. Our custodians and maintenance teams continue to clean our facilities within new guidelines from the CDC. Our security and emergency management team are coordinating several logistical tasks in response to the many needs that arise on a day-to-day -day basis. Our St. Paul Public Schools trades will continue as essential employees uh, completing our building projects. Uh, very important, especially this time of year, as you know, uh, we really gain incredible time when students aren't in session, when buildings aren't in session. There are so many people to thank for their tireless commitment for St. Paul Public Schools during this most challenging time. I want you to know how much you mean to me personally, our students, our staff and community, and I want you to know that I'm very proud of all of you. Yesterday, Governor Wall shared during his press conference, executive orders 2018, 2019 and 2020. These executive orders are to further protect the health of our community. Within executive 2019 is the continuation of distance learning, essential kid care and meals for St. Paul Public School students ending on May 4th. The plan would have Friday, May 1st and Monday, May 4th count as student contact days before students all report back to their buildings on Tuesday, May 5th. 
I do want to caution all of us and hope for the very best. The language in 2019 does, does authorize the commissioner to extend the distance learning period for the duration of the year if that is necessary. I want to thank you to those of you who have submitted questions. I will try to answer as many of them as possible uh, while we spend some time here today. I should also let you know that if I'm not able to uh, address the questions that you've submitted, that we will work on those as a team and post those to our website. So let me hear from you a little bit. Um, and again, I wanna remind you that the best source of information are regular updates that we put out. Our website is spps.org backslash COVID, C-O-V-I-D. And again, we try to um, twice daily update that website. And of course, if there is important information, bulletin, emergency information, uh, that goes up right away. Do know that some of the um, tenets of this work that I've shared with our staff is that I understand that uh, our March period, uh, the end of third quarter into our COVID-19 planning has been incredibly challenging for all of us, all of you and for our entire community. I do not want any of our plans to unnecessarily penalize staff, uh, including our teachers, in terms of the expectations that you have to recreate days that are lost in classrooms. At the same rate, I also do not want to punish our students. I want to make sure that our students can continue the best way possible on April 6th as we begin distance learning at St. Paul Public Schools and that we don't look back, we look forward and we do the very best that we can. Uh, so I want to make sure that that's explicitly clear uh, to each of you as we begin um, going into our distance learning plan on, on April 6th. Yeah. One of the other things, uh, you know, especially from an equity lens is all the information that we put out uh, we know that there's 125 languages spoken in St. Paul Public Schools households and by our students. It's very important to me that we take the necessary time to translate as best we can and get that information out both in text and written form and in any of the calls uh, that we make out uh, to the extent possible as well. Um, that is something very important to our staff, uh, to our team. It's something that our community values, um, expects and appreciates. Uh, and especially in these times, we need to make sure that we include all of our community uh, the best way that we can. And, and the great news is that St. Paul Public Schools does this every day. And I'm really proud of your efforts, all of our efforts in ensuring that our families all feel like this is their school district. And I want our staff to feel that way too. So a few of the questions. Uh, the first is, what is the likelihood that we will return to school May 4th versus finishing out the school year in distance learning? I like you, I'm, I'm watching, um, as much news, not as possible, but I, I watch the news both in the morning and then in the evening, uh, getting updates on the national perspective on COVID-19 and the response. And um, wow, I think blown away in terms of uh, what we're seeing in terms of, of the response by so many in our communities, both near and far. Um, and, I, and I think that looking at how um, it's impacting some of our communities, especially some of our larger urban communities, it would be wrong for me to try to predict that May 4th is going to be the end of distance learning. Um, I want you to know that right now, our plan is to open April 6th, do the very best that we can, and make sure that we're prepared um, in the event that the closure would uh, be extended. Um, I will be hopeful, I will be optimistic, but I also have to help plan for you and, and make sure that we are ready uh, should it be extended. I should also state, and I should have said earlier that uh, one of the other tenets that I had uh, when we started distance learning is I want to honor our spring break. Uh, that is a calendar day that was set a couple of years ago, and it was planned for St. Paul Public Schools. Now, I understand the stay-at-home order that we got uh, may have even further restricted uh, people's travel, but that is important time uh, for us to connect with those around us, those that we love, and make sure uh, that we have the time to do that. Um, also, another time to push pause before we start a distance learning environment that is new to almost all of us. I would guess that very few in St. Paul Public Schools have, have learned or taught or instructed or supported or been a superintendent in a distance learning environment. So it's all new, uh, which is exciting and challenging at the same time. And it's why I'm trying to establish this connection with you today. Some of you may wonder also why I haven't been sharing news with you. And I think some of that is because you've been overloaded, overwhelmed uh, with information. You know, as an SPPS parent too, I've received, uh, you know, all the communication as a parent. I know you have a staff uh, and it's been a lot. The other piece is that I wanted to wait and see what the governor's and commissioner's decision was going to be with the May, or I'm sorry, the March 27th uh, notice of our distance learning um, planning period being over. 
I wanted to make sure that I had this information, the May 4th date, uh, that I could share that with you so that we could really take our plan and move it forward. So it was very important to me that I had uh, relevant information that wasn't going to change the next day or sometimes even in the next hour. The next question, will the school year be extended? Is there a plan for the school year to continue into the summer months? What information can you share with us regarding summer term 2020 canceled virtual schedule change? Well, those are all really good questions and um, have them on um, several different lists that, that I've been keeping uh, here as well, uh, because they uh, pop up in many of our conversations and sometimes in, in idle time. I think our first and foremost, we have to get April 6 up and running. Um, we have to determine um, you know, what are the contingency plans if distance learning would be extended and what are some of those really important decisions that we have to begin to make. Now, we know that in a digital environment, we do have the ability to push out information in a very timely way. Um, and we will be increasing our ability to, uh, to have access with students and with families through this. That's our commitment. We're gonna continue to support everyone as best that we can. Um, so we don't have to have some of the paper time uh, timelines that we've had in the past, and we will be able to perhaps make some fluid decisions that we have to with regards to what summer of 2020 might look like. So I would be very, uh, short-sighted today to tell you that it's canceled, uh, but certainly we have to have several contingency plans as we think about summer 2020. What is the plan for senior graduation and will there be some form of ceremony? Um, this is perhaps one of the more difficult uh, conversations that districts are having around the country. There are, as of last week, 850 million public K-12 children around the world who aren't in school. I would imagine that number is even greater by now. And if you divide that by 12, um, that's how many seniors. Um, so it is uh, um, something where I, I've seen, you know, things in other districts, other communities that they're doing, rallying around their seniors and, and other students. It is not lost on me uh, one bit. Um, I think that we'll have to work together as a school's team. We'll have to collect information from our students, our families, um, our principals, our, our senior staff, senior high staff, and, and see what we might be able to do. To do. Um, so at this point, I don't have a, um, a, a definitive answer on what that might mean. Um, and, and just want to tell you that it is definitely something that is in my heart and my mind as we think about the impacts of distance learning on our seniors and all of our students. Will breakfast and lunches be served, uh, distributed to families next week during spring break in the same manner as this week? Uh, no, they will not. Um, and, and a few things. One, uh, the amount of food that needs to be ordered ahead of time and staged uh, for our distribution, for our, our implementation of our meals plan uh, is immense. Uh, so we do not have access to the same amount of food in terms of volume. Um, I also believe it's important to provide spring break for those staff who have been uh, working so incredibly hard to, to implement our meals planning. Um, as soon as last week, um, I and others on our team began working with our city and county partners to see what other resources in our community we could provide in our absence of having our regular meal plan during spring break uh, to make sure that, that our students could still uh, be afforded uh, some form of meals. Uh, so we are still working on, they are still working on details of what that might be, um, but we have been in, in regular contact with community partners and with our city and county uh, partners to ensure that there are there is food available uh, during our spring break. Thank you for that question. Uh, the next one is our layoffs in the plan. Um, as of right now, it's a it's a no for for distance learning. We are um, our students will be in session next week, and uh, we plan to keep all of our staff employed um, to facilitate our distance learning plan. I will tell you that we are at that point of our budget and staffing season where there could be changes based on that. And obviously, timelines have been shifted. And there's a lot of waiting game going on right now, just in terms of, of the solid picture we have for what our future might be for the end of this year, let alone for us to predict and plan for the FY21 or the 2021 school year. Uh, so right now through distance learning, there are no layoffs in, in the plan. Um, and we need to work together as a community and understand what everybody's roles are and make sure that we're supporting everyone at achieving the goals of distance learning. What is the plan for how TAs, EAs, teaching assistants, and educational assistants and other support staff can support student learning? Can all TAs count on job security through the end of the school year with distance learning? 
Uh, in my previous response, I said, yes, we are planning to use all of our staff in distance learning. Um, if I would sit here and tell you that right now, I understand exactly how student support is going to look uh, during distance learning, um, I would not be telling you the truth. Uh, we certainly have some, some effective ideas in mind for what it might look like, uh, but we need to be adaptive and flexible as needs arise in this new environment. And I can think of many ways that we might pool together different groups of staff uh, through different buildings, whether it be grade levels or certain um, content areas, uh, working with elementary versus middle versus secondary, uh, whether they are bilingual students or EL students. Um, so there's a lot of different ways that we can differentiate our supports. And in this distance learning environment, um, we can create what I would call a pop-up PD, pop-up meetings, where we can pool together uh, staff to make sure that they're all hearing the same information to support students in a consistent and effective manner. And it's also a great way for us to get immediate feedback as well. Um, I have to tell you that it would um, be really easy if I had all the answers and I could predict everything that's going to come our way. And I could sit from one place just like this and tell you this is how we are going to do this. Uh, but that's not the case. Uh, first of all, I want to respect our students and our families and the needs that they might have around distance learning uh, might be very different from the ones that I might have with my son. And I also want to uh, respect our staff, uh, that each of you is incredibly committed and you have routines. That's one thing I know about school staff is you have routines and it's really important. And we are far from routine right now in many of the things that we're about to do. So I ask you to be flexible and patient and I ask that you demand that same thing from us. Um, and if you're not hearing that from your supervisors, from district staff, you know, just let us know. Let us know that you're having a hard time understanding or that you have other ideas. And, and this is really the time for us to come together and work to find that common ground, again, in service of our students. So I appreciate that question. How will staff write out paper timesheets to do payroll Sorry, I'm having trouble scrolling here. How will staff write out paper timesheets and do their payroll during the next month until school resumes? Um, you know, it's a it's amazing. Many of you have heard me talk about uh, that we still do paper timesheets in SPPS, and it's amazing that it took a global pandemic for us to consider doing it in another way. Um, and I say that with a bit of humor, but in all seriousness, uh, we will uh, we have sent out instructions on electronic time monitoring. Uh, that will um, that we will be using for for the duration of our distance learning until we're um, back in in our system. So I will make sure that you get um, continued information on on how to do that. And I think we'll have a very seamless uh, uh, time in doing that. Our staff have been uh, uh, doing a great job of supporting us to move into this environment. Are we all still going to be on the payroll again? St. Paul Public Schools on April six will have all of our students back in session, and, and we're going to be ready to go. Um, as you know, the Minnesota Department of Education, through the governor's executive order, provided the 17th of March through the 27th of March, eight, I'm sorry, the 18th of March through the 27th of March for us to do this planning time for distance learning. So just as we're all on the payroll right now, that will continue as we implement our distance learning plan. A great question here. And um, just want you to know that we're having a lot of conversations about the April 10th Professional Development Day. Will it be switched to a B day? Now, I can tell you what a B day means from Robert M. LaFound High School in, in Madison, but I'm not sure that that's going to be a B day here. So I don't claim to know what a B day is. I would uh, imagine it's a modified schedule of some sort. Uh, what I can tell you is that on April 10th, we are um, analyzing what we want to use for, for PD on that day. Um, I think it'll be uh, both a, a good way in that we, you know, we're a few days in uh, to distance learning, but it's also a critical day in that it's a, the first five day session that our students have had as well. So we're talking about all different options uh, to make it as flexible as possible to keep our students engaged, but also give our staff needed time to both take a breath and perhaps learn from their colleagues around the district um, what's working well and how we can continue our great work. It is unclear how grades will be done for quarter three, particularly if a student earns an A third quarter and a B fourth quarter, they won't change the A to a B, the A to a B, will they, for third quarter. So we're, we're, I still have to work out some interpretation of that. I've received uh, several uh, emails today from students and staff alike. I certainly apologize for that. 
Um, you know, one of the greatest challenges is for us, we create all these great systems and sometimes they are rigid. And when you get into a uh, emergency state like we are right now, rigid isn't our friend. So we've got to find a way to, to make sure that we communicate. And going back to the two things I mentioned, I don't want to penalize staff with recreating something uh, that was from the past. And I also don't want to penalize our students for something they had no control over. Uh, so if we are sensing that from any decision that we've made, information that we've communicated, there is an unjust um, um, action because of that or an unjust outcome because of that, I want to make sure that we are addressing that. What is the plan for attendance and grading? How would we decide if students are not logging in during the day, but they do not submit an assignment? Uh, so I think a few things. One, um, we have to monitor to establish an average daily membership. Uh, that's how we receive funding uh, from the state, so it is very important. But honestly, more important than that, I want to make sure that we establish regular ongoing contact with our students. And if all of a sudden uh, Joe stops checking in for, for a day or two days or three days, I want to make sure that we're sending support to Joe and Joe's family to make sure they're okay. So the attendance is, and it always plays that role for St. Public, public Schools, but I want to make sure that we're, we keep that in mind as well, that it's important for us to have that regular ongoing touch point, certainly for our work and, and the instruction that we want to provide, but also for the safety and well-being of our students and their families as well. Uh, so we'll continue to get information out on grading and different, I'm sorry, attendance and different variations uh, that we might be able to do that. How will the district be addressing meal shortages on a weekly morning deliveries for families that lack mobility? Uh, we have established a few things. We've established a call line where meals can be scheduled. And we also have scheduled separate runs for those who we've identified as being um, highly vulnerable and may not have the same mobility. Uh, so we're establishing some regular contact with folks that are, um, you know, that, that qualify in, in that matter to make sure that we can deliver meals to them. Again, to Director Copen and her staff over at Nutrition Services, they doubled the amount of food that they uh, prepared and uh, packaged and distributed uh, this week. And I uh, really appreciate that. Something that is a reality, you all, that I want to make sure that we know is with everybody being in this, um, you know, in, in the country, that the demand for food is great. And um, it's, it's important for us to, you know, to get our orders in, but uh, we have to be ready for some of the challenges that, that we might have in that regard, too. So. Uh, we will continue, you know, after spring break with our, our current uh, plan of these two weeks and just really appreciate everybody's care and concern about our students and their families and ensuring that, uh, that students are fed. Will large events be allowed during the remainder of the school year? And what are the requirements? I'm not exactly sure what that means. Um, during the remainder of the school year during distance learning, of course, our buildings are closed. If this question means once students are allowed back, if we're back on May 5th would be the first student day, we would allow for large events. I don't know the answer to that. As you know, we've kind of progressed into uh, the entire COVID-19 response with distance learning. And you remember as soon as just a week ago, they were changing daily in terms of how many people. I believe it went from 500 to 50 to 100 to 50 to 10 to 7 to Germany is down to two people. So I, I don't know what that would mean in terms of how we would progress the other way, how those restrictions would be removed. Uh, but for right now, our buildings are closed until, um, until further notice. Will there be state testing during distance learning? No, there will not. Um, the federal government has, uh, Department of Education, has provided states the ability to file for a waiver. And it would allow us to, uh, we, we would be able to suspend our um, assessments for, for the school year. Now, there are a number of other um, organizations that provide testing, ACT, AP, IB are three that I think of that are outside organizations. We're working with each one of those organizations. And again, that is great information that we post regularly as updates come our way on our COVID uh, website, on the SVPS.org website. Time for just a couple more here. Let's see, when will staff be back in buildings? Will staff who are vulnerable to contracting COVID-19 be allowed to continue working at home? Um, so on and so forth. So again, this is uh, these are uncharted waters. Uh, we have a uh, state, national, and local state of emergency. Right now, we are taking the most drastic um, actions that that I've certainly ever lived through, and I would imagine many of you. At some time, those restrictions are going to be lifted. To the extent that they're lifted, I don't know, and I will uh, again progress back into 
um, into our life before COVID-19. Um, I would tell you that anyone who has an uncompromised um, health condition, we want to know about that and absolutely work with you. Um, all the um, guidelines that we've gotten from MDE and the Department of Education have been very specific around EDA and other accommodations that, that staff have. And uh, we will continue to honor that and, and work with you in the most uh, respectful um, way possible. How are special education accommodations being met during distance learning? Uh, physical therapy was the example here. Assistant Superintendent Marcy Dowd has been working with several groups, um, I know, to, uh, to address these questions. And uh, I don't sit here and know the answer to all of them. Um, so I would ask that you work with uh, your teams, uh, would contact your, your district level support and the, and the supervisor for those specific uh, answers and ideas. And we create the very best um, opportunity to, to do our work in the safest way possible. And for some of you, you're sitting here hearing me say this and say, well, Joe, how do I do that uh, in a safe way? You know, my, my work is based on, on physical contact or my work is based on physical proximity. And we're going to have to find some different ways to uh, to make those adjustments. And if we need to work with people outside of the district for that um, for that expertise, then we'll do that. But I'm I'm confident that that our team can come through, and we can we can determine the best St. Paul Public Schools way to do it. Um, how is this affected? Okay, I'll take uh, one final question here. How has this affected the budget? Well, as you know, this is the time of year. Uh, where buildings receive their staffing based on projections for the next year and based on projections about revenue the district is going to receive and expenditures, costs that the district is going to um, uh, spend uh, for that next year. So we're a little bit behind for a number of reasons, and I'm, I'm not going to uh, shy away from that one bit. Um, I also want to find the most dignified way to do this. Um, you can imagine that with the contingency that I'm thinking about and others are thinking about, there are the number of students that we had in St. Paul Public Schools, you know, towards the end of third quarter. There is a projected number that we had began working on a couple of months ago for how many we believed would be uh, in our district uh, in October, on October 1st. And then there's COVID-19 and the impacts that, that it has. And when communities across the world are impacted by tragedies like this, it impacts um, every local entity within a community. So we've got to think about this a little bit more broad, more broadly. We have to think about what would it mean if, if 500 more students are here than we thought because of some of the um, outcomes of, of COVID-19 as one example. Sadly, it could go the other way as well, where we um, don't see as many students coming back for various reasons as well. So we have to be uh, a little bit not cautious, but planful. We've got to have several different contingencies as, as we think about next year. Um, and we also have to make sure that we're making staffing adjustments in the most uh, respectful, humane way as possible. And I have to tell you, it's something that's been weighing heavily on me right now uh, to let someone know perhaps that they're not going to have a, a position in SPPS next year during this time. Um, it's just a, it's something really hard for me to personally uh, to just confront. So um, yeah, we have timelines, we have to work within contracts, and we have to give people ample notice so they can you know, even in these really difficult times, you know, look to find where that next uh, opportunity might be for them. So that's just a real answer to something I'm really struggling with. And uh, I will continue to work through next week and with our board at our April 7th Committee of the Board meeting. And then our April 24th, I think is the calendar day, Board of Education meeting for updates on our budget. That's certainly going to delay um, staffing, uh, but that's what we have to do right now. So I'm going to close here and just say that uh, I got through a number of these questions. There are hundreds more um, and probably even hundreds more just from how I responded to some of the questions. But I, I just can't say enough. Now I singled out some groups in, in this in, in terms of the work that they're doing. Um, this has impacted every single employee in St. Paul Public Schools. And for that, um, I just want to thank you for your, your understanding, um, the way of you have stepped into truly uncharted waters uh, for your commitment and for you letting your superintendent know by who you are that I can count on you to do this work. Um, and I know that I can. Uh, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of what has already taken place, the thoughtful questions that are coming back to me, um, staff and community members that are pushing us to really think about our students and our staff, making sure that we're doing this in the best way possible that respects who they are as individuals, 
and some of the opportunities that we need to afford them that might be different from other students. Um, to me, it just says that, that St. Paul Public Schools is gonna come through in these really hard times and we're going to do it together. Uh, we're gonna do it in a way that allows us to be patient and kind to one another. And we're going to do it in a way that makes this community proud of St. Paul Public Schools. So I wanna thank you. I hope that, uh, that I get to come back in front of you uh, more often in this way. Uh, re as a reminder, this will be uh, recorded for those who couldn't listen in and posted to our website. And we'll have additional answers to questions as well. So again, I wanna thank you for being part of Team SBPS and wish you a great rest of your day. Thanks everyone.